Hello community, today we're gonna be doing something a little bit more beginner sided. I know how convoluted and confusing this game can be, especially at the beginning, so I thought to myself, if I was starting in Hitman 3 today, which weapons and tools would I need? And I made a list, so today we're gonna talk about the 10 weapons you need to get first. Number 10, we have the Seeger 300 Ghost, the best sniper rifle in Hitman 2016, it's still the best all the way now in Hitman 3, it's fast, has a great zoom, uses subsonic rounds, which means your shots are extra quiet to avoid anyone being able to catch you while shooting. It has 18 rounds in the magazine, which although not a lot, are just plenty to take care of business. It's a silent assassin's weapon, not a wannabe mass shooter's rifle. This sniper rifle will give you all the tools you need to conquer any sniper challenge put in front of you. And if you want to get your hands on it, head over to Marrakesh and play the Chavoyo Calibration Escalation a fun and not too time taking escalation that will allow you to test and learn the sniper as a way to prepare yourself for future hits. Number 9, the ICA Remote Micro Taser. Such a useful tool and also so easy to unlock, I just can't not talk about it. And I'll be the first to admit that the taser isn't a weapon that you will always need in your inventory, however, for those situations where you do need it to set up electrocutions and fires, it can be irreplaceable. For certain targets, you can get a free kill by putting it in a place where they'll pick it up and then just push the button and get a free sound assassin kill. However, most of the time, you will be placing it in a water puddle or an oil leak, giving you free accident kills. Make sure to also put a coin next to it if you want to be extra certain that your target will go exactly where you want them to and give you extra time to pull the trigger. The taser is a useful item, but also, like I said earlier, very easy to unlock. All you have to do is head to Berlin and achieve a mastery level 2. You can do that on your very first try and never worry about setting up electrocution or fire kills ever again. Number 8, we have the Tranquilizer. Such a useful tool, especially created around pacifying people and not worrying about hiding bodies, while keeping sound assassin even if the bodies are found. Now there's many reasons that can be very useful to you, from allowing you to take fast disguises to weapons and important tools, there's no shortages of things NPCs can carry. It allows you to get rid of annoying bodyguards in a moment's notice and it works great on Freelancer where you can shoot couriers to take free mercies. A fantastic item and in order to unlock it, in regular Hitman at least, you will have to head over to Mendoza and achieve a mastery level 5. Or if you have bought the Deluxe Escalation, just play the Satumera Delirium Deluxe Escalation, that was not easy to say by the way, and you unlock it instantly. Number 7, it's a pistol we simply cannot look past and that is the Krugemeyer. The pistol special ability are the subsonic rounds, making it perfect for close quarter encounters. It will allow you to do pistol distractions in much closer distances and take care of cameras silently. However, it does come with a bit of drawback. As a stealth pistol, it requires you to use it adequately. You need to kill your targets from behind with an elimination or shoot them in the head. Anything else will not be good enough to take them down in time. This isn't a gunman's pistol. It's not meant for shootouts and combat. It only has 30 rounds in its magazine and it's by far the most inaccurate pistol in the game with also the least amount of damage. It's a weapon you pick up when you want everything to be nice and quiet. It's meant for silent hits where you want everything to be smooth. If you want to get your hands on this bad boy, the fastest way to do so is to head over to the elusive target arcade and beat any of the very first three arcades. As soon as you're done with one of them, the Krugemeyer will be yours to keep. Number 6 the electronic key hacker. Do not underestimate the usefulness of the key hacker. There are so many maps in which it can be a total lifesaver. Sapienza getting to the lab area, Marrakesh heading into the consulate building from the garage, the bank heading into the vault from the starting area and everywhere in Hokkaido. This little item will save you a lot of time and effort and get you right on track to completing your objectives without having to divert yourself to look for cards. And also, it's so easy to unlock as well. All you need to do is achieve a level 2 mastery in Chong Ink. That's one playthrough and you have it made. It's just too good and useful to ignore. Number 5, please do like and subscribe, is one of Agent 47's most iconic weapons, the Silver Baller. Total of 35 bullets, but they're hard hitting as fuck. Two shots to the chest will bring any target down for good. It's one shot headshot, of course, like every other weapon, However, it's the most accurate pistol in the game, as it has the steady aim perk which will increase the accuracy while aiming, or at least it says so. I personally find it quite effective, you can use it as a mini sniper if you're able to bang headshots. You can take it on pretty much every mission and no matter how things turn out, 
it will always have your back. If you want to get a hold of this majestic pistol, the easiest way to do so is to head over to Mumbai and you will unlock it after a single playthrough as it will only require a mastery level 2, meaning you can get the best pistol in the game pretty much straight out of the gate. Though Mumbai is not an easy map, so be careful out there. Number 4 is the Lethal Syringe. If you cannot be bothered to hide bodies, but want to keep your sound assassin intact, this item is a must have. On Freelancer, anytime I got a sound assassin objective, I never miss out on taking a Lethal Syringe and it has saved my ass multiple times. Not all targets are created equal, and sometimes you just have a brief moment to take down your target, but no time or place where you can hide their body. This is why you need this item in your inventory more often than not. The Lethal Syringe's prime use is very simple. Get in and get out. Take care of business quickly and quietly. And the easiest way to get your hands on it is to visit the sunny town of Sapienza, where you only need a Mastery Level 2 in order to unlock it. Number 3 is the combination of the Emetic Gas 2 and Briefcase. The combination that makes elusive targets wake up in cold sweats, fearful that their awful loops and game design may be avoided through this black magic. But alas, it was no dream at all, more like a living nightmare, because this combination will give you a free drowning kill or at least isolation to any target you're able to get close to. The trick is quite simple, take the Emetic 2 out of the briefcase, then find the briefcase in your inventory, open it up and put it back in, that's what she said. Now a trigger will show up in your inventory, a trigger of doom, all you have to do is close the distance on your target, press the trigger and green magic will release, the same magic most people get after visiting Taku Bell. But once that's done, your target will head over to the nearest bathroom, where you'll be more than welcome to take them for a swim. In order to unlock that magic, however, you'll need to visit Haven Island and reach a Master Level 5 for the gas too, as well as any briefcase. My recommendation would be the one from Dubai that you will unlock on Mastery Level 7. It's one of the strongest combos in the game, so make sure you use it wisely. Number 2 is the one and only Seeker. A dart gun, much like the Tranquilizer, however, anytime you successfully shoot someone, you will make them sick. Now, whether it uses some emetic poison on your targets or just plays the clips of Amy Schumer's stand up routine is difficult to know. However, the effect is noticeable and your intended target will immediately rush over to the nearest bathroom where once again you can take them for a swim. In order to unlock this majestic gun, you will need to head over once again to Haven Island and reach a mastery level 10. Before we get to number 1, here's a quick honorable mention the emetic grenade. An extremely useful tool for certain situations. Now you may ask yourself, well, if it's so useful, why isn't it on the list? Well, because its uses are more niche in comparison. It's an emetic poison, but unlike the gas briefcase, you can't use it on NPCs without alerting suspicion. And unlike the seeker, you can't fire it twice. However, it can be very useful for situations with moving targets, as the actual spread of the grenade is fairly wide. You will more often than not hit your target with very little effort. On the other hand, you won't have to bring a briefcase along or leave your pistol behind in order to have a seeker. It's a compromise worth making for certain targets and missions. Although there are multiple versions of this grenade, I would highly recommend you to grab the one from Ambrose Island by reaching mastery level 17. Now that may seem like a lot, but trust me, it's the best version by far, because unlike the other versions of it, it will explode on impact exactly where you've thrown it. The other two versions will bounce off the ground and release a couple of seconds after they've landed. The Ambrose Island version is far better, so that's the one you should go after. At the number one spot, we have the one item you literally can't play Hitman without, the lockpick. Anybody who's played the first section of Freelancer knows how hard it is to just move around maps without it. And it's even worse when you're given the door stay locked objective. The lockpick is an absolute game changer. It's an item you simply always want to have in your inventory. It's the item you need to get your hands on straight off the bat. Before you even think about anything else, get this item unlocked quickly. And the easiest way to do so is to visit Dartmoor or Miami where you'll just need a mastery level 2 aka a single playthrough and no locked door shall ever be an issue again, well, unless you're in Hokkaido. Anyways, that's my list, I'm pretty sure those are the things I'd definitely go after if I had to go from scratch. You can let me know if you think I've missed anything in the comments below, but I really don't think I have. Press the thumbs up if you've enjoyed, subscribe for more content, think about becoming a member if you want to support the channel, but before anything else, thank you very much for watching.